Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I am going to be working on Marvel's Gwenpool on a Deadpool blank cover. Now, last year I did a live stream where I sketched a image of Lady Deadpool, and after that live stream it just sort of sat on my computer hard drive. I didn't really do anything with it. Until now I decided that I could turn it into a, a sketch cover. And I took the pose and I started sketching that pose onto this cover that you see here. And I, while I was doing it, I made the decision to change it from Lady Deadpool to Gwenpool. So that's what we have here. I've got, I've already gone ahead and obviously finished the pencils. And then after I tightened up the pencils, the next step was to alter the title of the book to Gwenpool. So I took a Gwenpool comic, I kind of traced out the lettering, so I got the accurate title lettering from the Gwenpool comic book, and then I used white paint and painted the letters on over the Deadpool title. And then after that, obviously, as you just saw a minute ago, I took some black Micron pens and inked around it, and uh, the results worked out pretty well. Now, as I'm working on this, you might see me having to kind of lean in really close towards the drawing. Those of you who watch my YouTube channel may already know that I have very poor eyesight. And when I work for Marvel and Hasbro, I work digitally, usually, and that means that I have a nice big digital screen that I draw on, and I'm able to enlarge the image so I could see it and do nice detail artwork on the enlarged image. But obviously, when I'm working on something like this, traditionally, I don't have the ability to enlarge the image. And so in order to do tight, detail work, unfortunately, I really have to get close to see what I'm doing, practically put my nose right to the paper. And unfortunately, there's it makes it very difficult to record what I'm doing. So there are going to be times in this video where my head just gets in the way, and I apologize for that. As you can see here, I'm starting to lay down the reds in the background for the, the heart-shaped background that I put in there. And I've decided what to do here is rather than just laying down a flat red, I want to do kind of a gradation from a light red at the top to a darker red at the bottom. And this means I have to choose a few different red color markers and try and do a nice blend. And it's difficult to do that if I'm doing a bunch of tight detail shapes like this. If I had some open areas, I might be able to blend the colors uh, much easier. But I'm having to go around her arms and her legs, or, in her, excuse me, not her legs, uh, her arms and her, and her sword and her body. And so it's a little bit more challenging to get a nice blend from the light red markers to the dark red markers. And I'm doing this with I believe three different colors here. I've got a kind of a light, a medium, and a red color that I'm using to get the blending that I want. And what I'll do eventually in order to facilitate the blending even more and get kind of a smoother color transition is I'll come in with some uh, colored pencils uh, later on and just sort of help go over a little bit of the col with colored pencils to kind of uh, make the color blending a little bit smoother. And I'll also do that with uh, other areas uh, on her costume as well. But as you can see here, I've pretty much succeeded fairly well to get that transition of color that I want from a lighter red up top to the darker, deeper red down at the bottom. So the next step is on to her costume, where I'm working with the pink portions of her costume first. And just like with the reds, I'm using a few different pink colored markers. And I'm actually going to do the kind of the, the rendering and modeling with the color. What a lot of other artists do, uh, for, particularly with comic book art, is they'll pencil and they'll ink their uh, shading and their modeling with, with the ink lines. And then they'll spot blacks and do a lot of shading. What I'm preferring to do here is keep the line work open and do a lot of the rendering with the color instead. Now that means I have to do more work with the blending of the markers. I have to choose not only darker and lighter shades of markers, but also colors that will work well with highlight and shadow. So I'm using a bit more of a, a purple violet for the shadow areas here, kind of a light pinkish color for the uh, highlight areas in order to get a kind of a three-dimensional model look. 
and you're going to see me kind of go around trying to keep the markers wet here so I can blend them from one shade of color to the other while I'm working. Got the eye lenses there, and I've actually made a little bit of a mistake down towards the her leg where I've gone too far into the white area, so I'll have to kind of come in with some white paint and touch that up at a different time. Decided to deepen those shadows there under her arm towards her back, come in with more of a purple color, and then blend those together into the more pink areas of the costume. And the only way to get a good blending uh, like that is just to keep working back and forth, uh, light to dark, and just keeping it wet and kind of all blending it back and mixing the colors in until I finally get it to where I like it. Now it's time to move on to the white areas of the costume. And rather than pick a kind of a light gray marker, I've chosen kind of a light uh, purplish color. It, it's kind of a gray, but it's a purple gray, and I liked the color of it, so I thought it would be great for the shadow areas of her costume. Unfortunately, as I'm laying this down, I'm realizing it is way too dark, and I'm going to have to do something to fix that, because it doesn't look like a white costume right now. It looks something that's much darker. And now I've decided to... I've mixed together some white paint, I made a white wash and now I'm painting on that white wash over the shadow areas of the costume to lighten them up. Now it's time to move on to the skin tones. Now skin tones can be tricky, especially when you're working with something like markers. Uh, you don't want the skin tones to be too bright and juicy. Uh, you know, you can choose a peach tone, but you don't want it to look too orange. You can choose pink tones, but you don't want them to look too uh, pink. You don't want it to look like she's sunburn. Um, you know, earthy tones work as well, you know, as long as you're blending them properly. So, it can be kind of tricky because you want to keep them subtle and blend them properly. So right here I've laid down some peachy tones, getting a little bit too orangey on her leg there. So I'm coming in with some pinkier tones and to kind of go over so it doesn't look like her skin is too yellow or orange. Adding some purples there for shadows under her nose, some pink there on uh, for kind of a, a blush look on her cheek. And then I grab the colored pencils and use the color pencils to blend the shading and get a nice smooth blend on the skin. And that softens up those edges there in between the different colors. So now I'm moving on to the leather straps and pouches and belts that she has on her costume. Most of the shading, I am going to go in with uh, more black on these straps, these leather straps, but I am going to be using about probably three different shades of tan and brown to color in the different leather parts, especially on the pouches there. And then some, some gray there for the knife blade. Kind of a bronzy color for certain parts. And then again the light gray to do more of the modeling on her gun and her weapons. So now the color is pretty much finished and it's time to start on the black. And there's a lot of black areas, uh, you know, even though I'm not going to be filling in a lot of uh, flat blacks, there's a lot of line details that need to be done. 
So I typically start out with a fine line micron and start working from the back and move my way forward. So that's why I started on the swords there and I'm just doing the detail work. Contour lines, which are the lines that are on the outside of the shape, you tend to want to do thinner lines in the background and then thicker contour lines as you move forward in space. That way the things that are closer to you uh, can pop out and uh, jump off the page a little bit more. So you'll see here I'm taking a fine line micron to outline the swords uh, towards her back. And, but I also using that fine line to do the detail work on the inside, the interior, on her mask, for instance. And as I'm going along, if I have an opportunity, I'll also kind of fill in some blacks, you know, as I'm working in. So I've already filled in the blacks on her eyepieces there. I've done the detailing on her face and now I'm doing some of the interior line work on her costume. And if any of the black spots that need to be filled can are small enough, I'll use the, the fine tip micron to do that. With larger areas of black, I'll use thicker microns or I'll actually switch to a brush. So now you can see some of the leather portions, her pouches and her straps taking more shape and form now that I'm adding the blacks into that. Now I'm doing the seams of her costume, again with a very thin line. You don't want interior line work to be too thick. You have to have a light touch with it so it doesn't overpower and flatten the form. So really it's just go slow and uh, have a light touch with the line work. And then things that you want to pop out more, you use a thicker line. So now, for instance, we're moving forward with that arm there, and so I'm going to use a thicker contour line on the outside to make that arm stand out from the thinner lines that I'm using on the detail work. That gun has some details on it. I tend to freehand the curved and a more organic lines, but if I have to do any sort of mechanical object with straight edges, I'll, uh, I'll pull out the, the straight edge, the triangles, things like that. Here I am just trying to detail the gun. Do some circle guides just to kind of help me out with some of those curves. I never seem to have the exact size circle that I need. Never quite works out nicely like that. So I get it close and I'll just sort of use it for the curve that I need and I'll, I'm almost always end up freehanding it anyway at the end. Here I've switched back to the marker to add some detailing in the metal buckles. And just gone back now with the micron. And now I've gotten the brush out. These are some larger black areas, so sometimes it's easier for me just to ink those with the brush. It goes quicker. Now I'm adding in a few more shadow areas, kind of a darker brown, just to make some of those shadows on the leather straps deeper. Darken some shadows on the gun there.
punch up some of the bronze areas on the hilt of the sword. And to finish it off, I've decided to go ahead and take a thin micron and outline all of the parts. And I'll switch to a slightly thicker pen to outline the actual large heart there. Once I find the curve that I want, of course. Now I get a little bit of white paint and add some white highlights here and there just to finish it off. Add a little glint of light on the sword and finalize it with my signature. And that's it, we're done. I had a blast working on this one. I had never drawn this character before, and it was a lot of fun. I hope you had just as much fun watching me. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you on the next one.